Hello, hello, everybody. We are going to continue our Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team post-game playthrough. It's been a little bit since we've done this because brain getting hooked on other things, as well as the fact that there were moments where I was, like, trying to get into the mode of doing this, but then things would come up and smack it out of my brain like just absolute jerks. So, what we are going to do today is... Meh. Gotta select things properly. We are going to begin with me explaining things. Because, when I just realized, actually... Let me see about something. Just realize. Oop. Let's see. Nope. There. I want to give there more, like, to the top, so, because that was the top of the main screen was a, a little cut off. But basically, essentially, last time, I free, I think we went through and we beat up Mewtwo through another 99 level dungeon. And uh, then we went, I'm like, hey, let's go and maybe beat up some of the legendary birds. Why not? And uh, their recruitment rate is terrible and wonky and mean. So, as opposed to suffering through just a save scum hell, because that was really what I am go was going to do no matter what, because, like, it would be one thing if it's like, yeah, I'm going to challenge myself to, like, recruit the legendary dogs or something. Then I would, like, even though those are far worse on the recruitment gauge from what I've read, but... Considering that this is, like, related to other dungeons that you can unlock, I feel like an actually, like, semi-story dungeon. There are events that happen within these dungeons if you do them. So I went and got Zapdos, Moltres, and Articuno so that we can unlock the next story-ish dungeon. Really not story-story, but, like, enough that it isn't, like, Crazy. Meh. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and invite Articuno to join our team. So that we can unlock things. No, I don't want to. And good. And now we will see. That was good work today. I should get some rest. Let's see if anything story happens. If not, they're like... Who knows, maybe it'll take a bit, because I should have gotten all the prerequisites. And there's also another story-ish dungeon that we can at least begin unlocking. I read, like, just a enough to know what to do to get there, but that's it. Because some of it is wonky in this game. Serve complete. Then again, who knows what will happen. Will it happen if we step out? Because I should have done everything correctly to unlock the Lugia dungeon. Because it's like, beat one of the... It's like, uh, beat the one... Excuse me. Yeah. Everything is after me. I was KO'd on Mount Faraway. What's your information? A reviver seed. That's hilarious. We're going to grab Shane just because we can. Even though he doesn't follow us. Because the world is evil. But we're not going to go. I just want to see. Does not look like. Because I think it was like Silverfield or something. Or Silver Trench. But it is not there. So maybe we need to go into town. We need to offload our stuff anyway. But usually there's a cutscene. Hmm. Darn. Have to see. We'll double check everything in just a moment. Make sure everything is in there. I will keep those gummies, and we can feed them to 
Shane in the next dungeon we go to. So I don't think that there was, like, anything. I already thought that I did everything that was needed, that was necessary. But either way, let's go up here, because... Oh, maybe... What? You've seen the Mirage Pokemon? What sort of Pokemon was it? I see. I see, I see. I understood, so it is named ho -Oh. I see indeed. Truly. Truly, I envy you. Did you fall on your face? Roar! I, you, you've made me open my eyes. Well, they still look like googly, but still. The lesson is we mustn't ever give up. Because if you give up, that's when it ends. Thank you. You have inspired me to resume my travels. I will again travel the world to find rare Pokemon. Perhaps even before you. Farewell. So maybe I just need to, like, finish that. I don't know. Kind of amusing. Goodbye, Spinda. Don't die out there. Ekans, listen. I'm thinking it is best if only we go into the dungeon. If either one of us falls before the end. Oh, I get it. The other one can still make go make wishes. That's smart, Medichan. But of course, I can't wait until our wishes come true. My wish is for a broader lower jaw. I want bigger jaws so I can swallow bigger things whole. Well, that's disturbing. My wish is for a place where I can meditate in peace, with no one to bother me. It would be magnificent if I could meditate for a year without food. I heard your wishes, and now they will never come true because you told them to me inadvertently. Kya! I don't know anything. Me too. I don't know a thing. I don't know anything about a dungeon that makes wishes come true. I know nothing. Hmm. Well, if that is that, we can at least do a small, a small one. We're not going to do any of the big ones. Hmm. I guess we'll just do this Howling Forest one nice and quick, see if that opens anything up. If not, I will look again and see. Oh, darn, I forgot to check my... Because I'm fairly certain that I got everybody, Articuno and everything. Oh yeah, and I'm going to have to activate Shane to kill everything in his path. I will also need to remember the minute controls of this game. Yeah, because I'm fairly certain that all the game asked for, and I forgot that I could do that. Oh, I can destroy the environment. Nothing can stop me. But yeah, essentially, I'm fairly certain that all I require is to get the Latios duo into my team, which I did, and then recruit the legendary birds, which I should have also done. Would be hilarious if I somehow like, messed up, and in actuality, I missed, like, Moltres or something, then that would be pain. Granted, I guess we could, like, hunt down the Metacham and Ekans dungeon, because apparently for that one, it is simply that we need to talk to them multiple times until we get prompted to go and save one of them from a dungeon, I do believe. And then that unlocks even further dungeons. Go kill that fool for getting in your way. Then again, it could also be that... Because I'm trying to remember, like, what other dungeons have been like to unlock. Then again, maybe the game is allowing you a moment to go and do optional dungeon stuff. Level up, get some items, and then they throw 
a dungeon at you again. Because if I'm correct, there should be... I'm trying to remember. It's been a bit since I looked at the little list. Oh yeah, I forgot. I was going to feed you all the gummies. So that you can become big and strong and smart. I don't really think you... Like... I don't think that there are other gummy skills, IQ skills that you really need. All-terrain hiker. Oh. So now he can devastate the environment as well. If I activate it. Which I guess I could. Wait, I'm just trying to think how many dungeons there are because there's Silver, Silver Trench. One unlocked after Silver Trench is completed, I believe. The dungeon related to Medicham and Ekans. And then I think a dungeon unlocked after that. So about... F I'm terrible with numbers. My brain was just like, oh yeah, four to five. It was just like I literally counted them off in my head. How do I not know which dungeons there are? Go kill all of them. Murder them all. Again, I love the music in this game. I just realized we already passed by the dungeon, like, diddly dee. I'm dumb. Grab that, because why not? We're, like, never going to get Shane to the ultimate IQ level, but that doesn't mean we can't try. It doesn't hurt to try. Murder the fools before you. Gather experience. I revive a seed. It is a revive a seed. We need all the revive a seeds that we can get. Because the world is evil and mean. <laughs> Granted, that wouldn't help us if I decided to do the, like, super challenge dungeons. Which I really have no want to do. They're the ones that are like, ah, you go in, you don't have an inventory, and you're level one. Have fun. I was like, <laughs> I don't like that. Especially because I can only imagine that they're also full of traps. But at the same time, I shouldn't really be afraid of that because... I'm now, like, basically borderline trap immune so long as I have a brain, so... Shouldn't be terrible. Hopefully they don't also reset your IQ. That would just be mean. Then again, this is also the game that's like, Aha! We're gonna have traps that destroy everything. That ruin your soul. And off we go. Two more levels until we get to... A client. Then hopefully... It'll activate the next diddly D. Either that or I am Le Fool. Survivor Seed. No, a Totter Seed. So many of these, like, throwable items that I just refuse to use. Because I'm just not an item gamer. It's like, you can use this to have effects. And I'm just like, eh. I don't care. I prefer to line my inventory with, like, simple but consistent things. Like reviver seeds and, like, max potion thingies so that I can, like, ensure that things go well. Rather than fill up my inventory with things that I'm going to throw away. No, we're in a cave, are we not? <laughs> we're in a cave, right? So why is it snowing? And also it didn't say that it was our... Hmm. Could have sworn that we... No, because we did activate the... 
the mission. So was it actually f level 14 that it was and I misread? Entirely possible that I am just a fool. Always possible. Either that or I'm insane, and I think I did, but it was all like an illusion in my mind. Reach destination floor. Okay, so I'm not that insane. For some reason, I just thought a three was a four. Because, you know, that's what sane people do. Be gone, far-fetched, and be flung to the far reaches of the galaxy. Yes, I would like to leave. Leave this station to a terminal far better. Thank you for rescuing me. Here's your reward of money. And a peck of scarf. And points. I'm still disappointed that your evolutions don't have talk boxes. Like, I understand that's work, but at the same time, you couldn't do that? Hmm. All right, I'm going to quickly take a look. Once you have cleared Stormy Sea, recruited the Latios combo, and managed to befriend all three legendary birds, you may unlock this dungeon. Oh, I need to talk to Alakazam. That's kind of odd. At least when it came to the... No, because I don't think there's ever been one where we need to activate it. That's odd. Especially because there's no real reason to talk to... Alakazam, at this point in time, I do not think. Well, there's two northern range ones, so I guess I'll keep those. Well, then again. Okay, they don't seem to be. In fact, I want to just take them out of my little deck, accept them, and I might do them on my... Remember. But yeah, it's just, this seems odd that if we have to talk to Alakazam, like... I would never have thought to do that because everybody's dialogue has been stagnant for ages. So I just don't know why you would do that. You'd think that it would be... You would complete it, befriend all of them, and then the next time you step into this area, like, Alakazam would be like, Oh, hey, thing. Hello. Here is information. And just, like, shove it in your face and be like, hey, go do it. And you'd have no choice to. But either way, well, let's go ahead. He's fucking gone. Alakazoom? Alakazoo. Where art thou? Great, he's gone. I didn't even notice. Oh, because he's floating up here. I should have noticed that. It's, it was just my assumption that this area is forever stagnant and never, like, transforming. That, you know, just Alakazam being up here didn't notice. Maybe he wasn't up here last time. I don't know. My memory shit. I have heard of a weather anomaly afflicting a certain sea. They say a whirlpool stretches from sea to sky in a colossal tornado. It is said to be near the legendary island friend area. It hasn't caused any damage so far as I know, but it does concern me. The legendary island belongs to your team. Will you travel to the legendary island and observe what is taking place? Sure. Ah, uh, good. You accept the job. I hope for your best. I hope for the best from you. Okay. We'll go do that, but first we'll bother these two, if they are still two. Your friend is dead. I got KO'd in that dungeon. But what about Medicham? Hope she's okay. I think this is like the only time a pronoun has been used. Every time it is they or it. This is actually very interesting. I hope she gets to the end and gets my wish to come true. Yeah! Uh, what are you staring at, you? I'm having a hard time trying to make up my mind! Get lost! Uh, wait a second. Maybe I shouldn't be wishing for a bigger lower jaw? I wonder if it'd be better if I could... If it'd be better if I could coil myself tighter. Hmm, mutter. Very interesting. And now he's back to his place. 
Yeah, I just never expected that. We'll check this just to make sure. And nope. Just wanted to make sure, but hopefully everything is good. Everything be grand. So yeah, we have to go to our friend island, actually. That's kind of interesting. How do they handle this in the Switch remake? Summary. Because they're on the legendary island. He's on the Rainbow Peak. Well, let's go visit him. Yeah, they're on their own. And flying away. Ah, just flying together. Very interesting. Are they arguing? They give me a thing. Fire, ice, and electricity. When the three powers merge as one, the guardian of the sea is set to arise. Our arrival at the legendary island. The three of us caused the sea guardian to awaken. It is what caused the whirlpools to grow into tornadoes. I have here the vortex stone. Bearing it, you will gain access... Well, gain passage through the sea's tornadoes. It will lead you to a place called the Silver Trench. There, you will find the Guardian of the Sea. Now go. The Guardian of the Sea awaits you. Neat. Interesting. That's very interesting. And then I guess we went home and had a nap instead of actually going out to do things. That's interesting. Is it an actual item that is in my item, Diddly? No, it is not. Thank you. That's actually very interesting. Now I'm imagining the friend areas were like... their own thing. But let's go to the Silver Trench! Because it said this is all I need. Ah, yes, we have the Vortex Stone. Did that just say that we also need a water-type Pokemon with us? Hopefully not. That would be a weird restriction, considering that we've used Dive before. But okie dokie. Dive, 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 the dive. The dive is now mine. I just realized I don't think I've gotten the Fly TM yet. HM. I still can't go back to the one place to fight Rayquaza. Is it Rayquaza or Rayquaza? Please let me in. Don't say water type. To enter this dungeon, you must have a water type Pokemon. Why? That's my question. Why? Why specifically a water type Pokemon? What are your typings? Dragon Psychic. Hmm. What about you, Articuno? Ice flying. Do I even have a water type? This is actually kind of annoying. Because all of my Pokemon are like low level. This is actually very annoying game. Why in the world do I need... Anything. That's just very silly and stupid, if you ask me. All the other ones are like, hey, you can just do this. But now this one's like, eh, fuck you. I just, I don't understand it. Why? I guess we could go to a water place. And hope. Yeah, I guess we have to go to the stormy sea. Let's see if there's a stormy sea thing we can pick up along the way. This just seems like an additional handicap of bullshit. Nope. So I guess I'll need an escape orb so I can leave once I recruit somebody. This is just stupid. I'm gonna say it's just stupid. 
There is no reason for this. They've already set the precedent that we can just, like, go to all these other ones. Let's see. Allows to uh, the rescue team to escape from a dungeon. Take. Yeah, because in all the other ones, we literally went below the stormy sea. Why do we need a water type for this one? It makes no sense. Or we could go to the Grand Sea, I guess. See what it's like there. We just need to go and beg that the game gives us a recruitment early on. It just is very odd and stupid. I'm gonna also have to make sure I get the hits in. Yeah, this is just a very stupid thing. You need a Water-type Pokémon. Why, though? Why do I need a Water-type Pokémon? When all the other times that we have an HM, we can just go. No problem. Makes no sense. Sure, why not? I'm gonna check your typing just to be safe. No. Others, no. Team. You're a water flying. Well, let's see if we can recruit anybody else on our way. Just in case. Maybe get deeper into this grand sea. Because basically, this just turns the goddamn thing into another escort mission, which is stupid. I don't like it that it's forcing me to do this. It's just like, oh, well, you should have had a team that had it already. It's like, no. Because if that's the case, then they should have already have dungeons that required multiple typings to get there. It's just kind of stupid that just randomly... And I can only assume for this singular and only dungeon that this is what's expected of us. All other dungeons? No, not at all. This dungeon for some reason? Apparently entirely needed. Yeah, screw it. We'll just take this one. We escape with the escape orb. <laughs> we found an escape orb here. But yeah, that's just... That's just very dumb. That is just very, very dumb. It makes no sense to me. If you wanted to have it be this way, like... Because that's just the thing. If it had been consistent throughout that you needed um, a Pokemon to know, like, that move. We'll take Tiny Woods and the Great Canyon and we'll delete them later. Or we could just delete them now. Yeah, but it's just like, in my opinion, if you were going to have something like this, you should have had something like this throughout the entire game. Not just here, randomly at the end. In a post-game dungeon. Especially because we literally got a special item that, like, this will let you through. <laughs> they give us a story item and say, this will let you through the place, all the storms and shit. Yeah, this is odd. This one I have to use the exit command for. Because it would be one thing if it was throughout the entire game. And you needed to teach a Pokemon the HM to go to that place. And then you'd basically have a, ver a veritable horde of HM slaves that you might, like, level up so that they can go with you. Hell, if I wanted, I could probably just teach Dive to Wingle and then put that away. It is just very dumb. Well, apparently not. <laughs> 
Because it is a water type and the game better respect this or else <laughs> maybe it'll go, no, you need a water type that can learn dive and have dive in your inventory. It's just very weird. Don't reject me again, you bastard trench. And it didn't even auto-save me before we went in. That's odd. This is just very weird. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Why? Why you like this? Who made that decision? <laughs> Not to mention this is basically the Grand Sea. <laughs> we, we were just in a place like this to recruit more Pokemon. And this is partly why I don't like this. <laughs> Okay, this is just bullshit. Game? This is genuinely bullshit. Game! Fuck off! I hate enemies that are just like, uh, I'm gonna do bullshit. Oh, now you go in only one direction, bastard. It was just very annoying. Why are you like this game? Well, fuck off of a confusion, genuinely. You're gonna be a bastard and throw a bunch of bullshit my way, forcing me to recruit a Mon on top of having an HM in my inventory. And then you're gonna throw a bunch of annoying move bullshit at me as well. How dare you, game? Terrible. Who knows, maybe this is a programming mistake, and they meant to have all a, like, originally, at the beginning of development, they wanted, like, all dungeons to be accessed this way in the post-game. You need an HM to get there, you also need a Pokemon that can learn the move. But then maybe later in development, they were like, nah, let's not do that, but then they forgot to take the restriction away on this dungeon in particular. Because that's the only thing that makes sense to me. There's no other reason why this would exist. The random... Oh, yeah. Better not stickify any of my shit game. Wing attack can't be used. Why? Shelter wants to join. Too bad. Like, honestly, it's times like this where I wish I could control my allies at the same time as me. Then again, I guess I could always set my... I could always make the control be Wingle, and I could control Wingle and then set the tactics to my Umbreon and my Grovile to be just run around all over the place. And then I could just follow behind them. Like, maybe. But still, such a weird thing. I do not get it. At least it's giving me all of these. All of the exits right back to back to back to back. Hey, a Corsola. Neat to see you. Yeah, I think the main re- like, I probably wouldn't be as annoyed by this fact if not for the, like, fact that- First, <laughs> how dare you hit my- my poor man. That yeah, basically, due to the fact this being so late into the game, this basically turns it into a escort quest. That's partially why I decided to go to the Grand Sea, the furthest into the list dungeon. To recruit a Pokemon from because that was like I hmm my brain suddenly says well I should have gone to the stormy sea and recruited Kyogre but I don't know its recruitment rate I don't even know if you could if it is like recruitable hmm 
Not to mention, I don't know what the legendary size stuff does, because I think there's like a body limit size in this game that cannot be exceeded. I don't care to fight any of you. I care to just run past this. And it's literally just letting me run past everything, really. Why does everything in this place have multi-hit moves? Alright, grimy food for some reason. Why is grimy food just on the ground here? Why? That's silly. Like the Kool-Aid Man, we come through walls. Hello, horsey. Now die. Too bad. I'm not on a recruitment drive. I still wonder why this is like the only dungeon so far. Because there have been tons of dungeons that require HMs that at least make somewhat sense. And it's kind of cool, the decision of be like, ooh, do you want to teach a move to a Pokemon? Or would you just like to carry the HM in your inventory and risk losing it if you black out with tons of the HM dungeons? Then going, haha, save before you go here, unawares that it is being played on an emulator because it is a fool. It is a program that serves me. Jesus Christ. Leave him alone. Good for you, killing the monster. Kill them all. <laughs> what? What the absolute hell? All right. This is interesting. The whole dungeon is one room. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, I'm going to allow Bullet Seed now. Because maybe it'll hit multiple. Probably not. This is weird. That's all this is. This is just weird. Darn you. Why can't you aim properly? See, they can aim properly. Why not you? Yeah, it's one thing to just spawn into a monster house. It's another for the entire room to be the monster house. The entire dungeon. Go ahead and clear out all the enemies. No, we're not going to have anybody else join us. That would just be Reviver Seed Doom. Why do all the horsey want to join me? Be gone. This is just weird. Is this why the game wanted me to bring an escort mon? It wanted to punish me? Also a star you. I don't think we've seen one yet in this game. Either that or it was a long time ago. Oh. I was wondering why things are taking a bit. This is just weird. Odd and strange. Never saw that coming. Then again, this entire, like... What is it? Like, gathering...
Because I just realized that we're, like, hovering over deep water. So that's probably why it wanted a, a, a water-type Pokemon. Because aside from our all-terrain hiker skill stuff, we really shouldn't be here. Interesting, but at the same time, like, it still feels a little out of left field. No, not that. I want to seal away his bullet seed just in case. Save it for Lugia. I do like that Lugia's dungeon is unlocked by recruiting the three legendary birds. Kind of in re reference to Pokemon 2000. That is a funny fun fun. Which I, which come to think of it, why are the Kanto legendary birds tied to the Johto legendary sea monster? If you think about it. Because... You know, that is weird. Is Ho-Oh ever, like... Because I've never watched the, like, all of the Pokemon movies. I want to eventually, you know, just, like, as something to do. Hey, a gold ribbon, neat. But, yeah, just as something to do, I eventually want to watch all the Pokemon movies. But having not watched them yet, I don't know if Ho-Oh appears in any of them. Which is interesting, because Lugia was in the second movie, but instead of pairing Ho-Oh or any of the legendary Johto dogs with Lugia, they instead used the Kanto legendary birds. Oh, my bad. Which you'd think... You'd think, like, the legendary birds would be tied to Kanto. Or, like, things going on in Kanto. Then again, I guess there really aren't that many legendaries in Kanto for them to use. Not really, because, yeah, it is basically just the legendary birds and then Mewtwo, isn't it? But still, it's just kind of odd that they... they did that. Because the legendary dogs, Ho-Oh, they were all there, and you'd think that they might... utilize that. The relationship there. Especially because all of the legendary Pokémon, aside from Celebi, are really tied together in Johto. With the legend of the Tin Tower and the other tower. But instead, they're just like, yeah, the legendary birds. Which I never thought of before. Because, like, the legendary birds in the movie work decently well with everything there. Well, yeah, it's just weird to think about. And also seeing the deep water tiles, no, we are not all perpetually floating on deep water tiles, so... That excuse of, hey, you need a water type to get in this dungeon is also out of the way. This literally has no excuse for the way it is. And why is there so much grimy food in here? This is just a weird dungeon. Your ice ball has failed. Now please die. Your defense curl will not save you. But then another odd thing is like... They split up the legendary dogs... Through multiple movies. Because in Pokemon 3... I forget what that one was called. It was just like Pokemon... Yeah, because... It was like Pokemon the first movie... Pokemon 2000. 
and then there was Pokemon Forever, but I don't think that there was a number pun title, or at least fitting number title for Pokemon 3. But yeah, because in Pokemon 3, an illusion of Entei is used in conjunction with the unknown, which kind of work because they're both from the second generation. And then there's Pokemon 4, Forever, which use Celebi and Suicune. At least I think Suicune is in that one. I hate you, game. Fuck off with the traps, assholes. Especially because they can, like, ooh, gooify my shit. I'm gonna have to start saving after every level again because of the fucking forced escort bullshit. Because they force me to bring in a poke. Because, like, even if, even if somebody went out through the trouble of, like, leveling up a water-type Pokemon to go through dungeons with. Like, unless you're, like, your starter or your partner were a water-type Pokemon, you're basically screwed for this. Because even if you went through the trouble of recruiting and leveling up a, po a water-type Pokemon... I highly doubt you're going to grind their IQ to be able to avoid traps. Which is part of my annoyance. So I just, I don't understand why. You need an HM and a Water-type Pokemon to enter this dungeon, and there doesn't seem to be really a point to it. What is the purpose? What is the point? Unless my initial guess of they actually were going to, like, eventually, like, initially they wanted to do that. Like, ah, oh, we're going to have you require a Pokemon of the same type as the HM move to get into dungeons with that require HMs. But then they decided against it for whatever reason. But then in the go around. Alright, so now we know that this is indeed intentional. Gotta protect my goddamn escortee. Pull up Shane. Squibble these guys out. This is rude. I swear the game knows when it goes after my weak escort Pokemon. It knows what it's doing, the bastards. And now I'm going to... Activate Bullet Seed. Please use it. Use it. Do I have to take over and use it myself? Why can't my ally actually be in intelligent? Quit shifting my focus. I want to snipe some bitches. Why do you have such a high, like, dodge rate, you bastard? That's basically all I wanted. And now we will go back to me, Neon the Umbreon. But first, I guess, we'll lock away Bullet Seed so you don't... Darn it. I meant to lock that away. I don't, f I don't see why you can, like, do it that way. Don the game. Hmm. Bleh, bleh, bleh. I 
I just got hooked up on random tactics that don't work. Yeah, again. I wonder what their, the method to their madness was regarding the usage of the various legendaries in the various movies. Was, or if there even was one. And then Shane can go schmiggity schmack that guy. Kill him already. Definitely an interesting gimmick for this dungeon. Kind of amusing that they're like guaranteed monster houses. Just never thought I'd run into something like that. Just, I don't know, feels weird. Goodbye, sucker. But I still don't understand why this dungeon is the way it is in regards to the escort water type. It just feels weird. Out of place and everything. That's a stupid gimmick. Ah, oh, it does damage anyway. Because, you know, that's fun and I have to be careful with my... My escort mon. Like, I kind of get what they're going for. It's just like, ah. Oh, our players are going to be too well leveled and now we need to get the fuck out. Because fuck a Pokemon with the ability to just go, you take damage anyway. I don't like that. Like, I understand if it's a move, because they have to waste a turn doing something with it. But for the game to just go, screw you. It feels mean. Actually, come to think of it, I'm going to see if I can activate the all-terrain. Diddly dee. And I don't really care about what's lost. Now Shane can come with me across everywhere, except traps. <laughs> Fuck a Pokemon as I heard before the ad went off. Lol. I honestly forget. Oh yeah, fuck a Pokemon of that ability. Because I'm talking about, will you stop that game? Meh. With the traps on my escort water Pokemon. But I've been fighting Pokemon that have the ability to be like, oh, you used a basic attack against this fish. And now it smacked you with rebound damage. And I don't like that. It's just like, how dare you game? It feels mean. But yeah, so far this dungeon has just been weird. I've been primarily hooked on the fact that it's like, Aha! How dare you want to play the game? Go have a low-level water type in your party. And like, even if it the, the, the dude like was of level and not likely to be annihilated in two to three hits, I would still be annoyed because... My poor man isn't, like, intelligent enough on IQ gummies, so he'll forever run into traps. Which is going to, like, like there is a good 50-50 chance that that is going to screw me over before we get to Lugia. That my escort Pokemon is going to take a chunk out of my Reviver Seed. My Reviver Seed pool. Die, love disc. Die in the directional pad room. Oh yeah, I forgot. That's... Uh, I was going to say... Hmm, my brain reminded me I was going to do a thing before we went to the next level, but I forgot, and then that reminded me I needed to eat an apple. Apple! 
Motherfucker. At least it was a mud trap. I'm not so annoyed by, like, piddly traps like that. It's mainly the ones that, like, destroy something of mine. All-terrain freedom is probably going to be my downfall someday. Somehow. Quit spawning sticky traps. I hate them. Whalemer. There has to be somebody out there who named their Whalemer Wilmer. It just makes sense. Die, love disc. Go to the CD tray. No, I don't want to, you to join the party. We already have one late week link. I wouldn't be surprised if one of these days I go through not caring about recruitment and I get a super duper rare recruitment and somebody randomly watches and goes, No, you fool! That was a 0.01% recruitment rate! That is entirely possible. Unlikely, but possible. I wonder how deep this dungeon is. Well, apparently the game wants me to know. I named one... William. <laughs> That's a good Whalemer name. Or like whale Pokemon name in general. Because really... They're like two people. There's two kinds of Pokemon nicknamers. People who go with puns and people who just go with normal names. Like, hello, this is my Pokemon, Zack. And of course the Pokemon company went, well, it's mildly ball-shaped. Give it rollout. Ah, oh, God damn it. I've been infatuated against my will. You'd think that once the object of my infatuation was dead, I would no longer care. Or like, infatuation would cause me to fight my ally. Because they're trying to kill the object of my infatuation. You'd think it would be one or the other. It just feels weird. Kill the Whalemer. Cut him down to size. Take his oil. You'd think that this place that has, like, four rooms would be easy to find the exit to. There are so many whales in here. Oh, yeah. And this is, again, why I hate escort missions. Thank you for attacking me. Because <laughs> really, it's just, I don't want my reviver seeds to be eaten up by a low-level wretch who I did not even want. But there's, like, no real tactic I can use for the poor man. If I try to send him running away, he's luck likely to just run into a Pokemon at random and die. So I have to babysit him. But then comes moments where he'll be locked into place. Anyway. Blocking. Like, I wish I could command the orientation of my allies. So I can be like, hey, Shane, be right next to me at all times unless you're going after an en enemy. So that doesn't happen. Where the perfectly level, like, the perfectly leveled ally who could wipe the floor with an enemy and not die is locked behind the newbie who is underleveled and not ready for war. It's like having your general standing behind a private going, Move over, private! I can kill that bastard! He's like, No, Sarge! I'm going to be the one! As he just gets punched in the face repeatedly, nearly to death. You motherfucker. At least, <laughs> I named Love Di Disc Love Dicks, because 12-year-old me thought that was funny. Yeah, that tracks. At least I've been lucky with the traps in this dungeon. And all of the sticky and grimy ones. 
like, didn't annihilate anything in my inventory that I care about or want to use. Because at this point, if the game could be very... Stop it! <laughs> at least it's a mud trap. At least it's a mud trap. I talk about traps and they come calling. Who knows, maybe they made this dungeon midway through development and realized, oh no, people might be at this point basically immune to traps. What do we do? Bullshit. <laughs> Force a child into danger. Stab it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting lucky. Nothing in particular was affected. Thank God. Love Disc wants to join. No. I already have to look after one potential ri Reviver Seed pit. Ah, the Monster House of Death. Like, maybe I can charge away. And get to the exit. I have to protect my escortee. No, I'm not going to recruit you in the middle of a monster house. Are you insane? Maybe if I go up enough, they'll target Shane instead of me. Ah, uh, who am I kidding? They're all gonna come for me. I'm gonna be just, like, brawling out all of these monster houses back-to-back, -back, aren't I? I can't believe I got attacked off-screen. Off <laughs> the conga line just comes with me! I move up, the conga line moves up. And now the bastard escortee is confused. And now I'm also confused. God damn it. At least I am non-traitor to my allies. Personally, I think it should be illegal for there to be... ...confusion in a monster house. Personally, because then this bullshit happens. Now they're targeting the escortee like a bunch of assholes. I should be smarter with my tactics, but I'm not used to the game being an asshole and being mean. Get the fuck away. Of course they're going after him. Will the confusion wear off already? Should be illegal for confusion to last this long. Confusion, will you fuck off, please? It has been going this entire goddamn time. Why is this slow king just the I'm going to waste your time, motherfucker? And I lost, like, three Reviver Seeds there. Because this game is a dick. Or more like just this particular dungeon for no reason. Like, seriously. I don't understand it. This is the only one where they're just like, Hey, we want you. And only you. For only this dungeon. To have a Pokemon. Who can't defend itself. Unless you, like, were lucky and chose a water-type leader or partner Pokemon. But I wonder, like, how many... What's the possibility of that? It's not even really that. It's more like... Because first you have to get lucky 
for your hero, because there's the 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 the, the quiz. And then you can choose a potential water type Pokemon partner. But personally, will you stop it, game? You already wasted a bunch of my reviver seeds, will you kindly fuck off? It is just being very rude. And there's just no real way to adequately control the escortee without potentially p throwing them even deeper into pain and misery and doom. Because either you're lucky and your escortee can run to the corners of the world and not get hit, or they get trapped and you're doomed. And all your reviver seeds are eaten away. <laughs> I almost wish that I could designate him just like, hey, I don't want this partner to be able to utilize the reviver seeds. If they die, they go home. Because that way you could just be like, hey, you're here for leveling purposes. If you die, oh well, go home. So this is another 99 level dungeon, ain't it? I thought it was going to be like, I don't know, 50. But it just keeps going and going and going. No, I already have one dispenser of eating away my reviver seeds. I don't need two. Granted, you would probably be a higher level than my Wingle, but still, I don't trust you. You'd activate traps. You get bullied by the higher level monster... Monster Mash Pokemon? Oh no, it's a Sharknado. Well, we did... According to the lore, we did pass by... Like a giant diddly dee. Oh, counterattack. That's fun. Everything here just eats away at my soul. Counterattacks. We get out of here if you're counterattacks. At least they don't counterattack you if you kill them first. There is that minor consolation prize. Ah, great, it's a muck. Please don't poison me. Thank you and good day. Of course, everything is doing major damage. Will you fuck off, Mike? And of course, now we're gonna do the Dance of Healing. And of course, the game is going to be a dick and activate things against me. Ah, the menu popped up because a Pokemon elsewhere in the dungeon is doing shit. <laughs> We're going to interrupt your controls. I just want to heal, dance, and peace game. All right, I wonder why Shane is, like, taking so much less damage against these dudes than me. That Constrict was wrecking my shit, and he just took two damage from it. I need to heal Dance because of that Constrict. Meanwhile, he's just hunky-dory. I guess that also works. Aurora Beam just scares me because it has the same effect as having to eat a Reviver Seed. It scares me. Alright, so Sharpedoes and Artilleries are Annihilate from Orbit. We don't care about items, we just care about escaping. Call this Dead by Daylight, we just want to get out. For a moment, I thought it was going to be a monster house. I was slightly scared. Quit using ranged attack and die.
For some re Game, you are being major asshole. And once again, this is my wish that I could control the, like, orientation of the goddamn party. Ha! <laughs> so annoying. Why are you right next to me instead of him, you fucking asshole wingle? And this always happens with every single low-level bitch that comes into my party. It also doesn't help that I can't destroy, like, walls, like, uh, blah, 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 diagonally. So I'm screwed on that front, too. Game is being mean. Quit bullying me. Aha! Fuck all of you. I paralyze all of you because I can. I hate you, Octillery. Ooh, do encore when there's a fucker with counterattack in this bitch. Will the Encore go away? Jesus Christ. Well, I guess I'm fucked. Game, you are being an asshole today. It makes no sense. At least that guy didn't use an ice attack on my wing goal. That would have sucked. We're gonna have to deal with this shark pedo anyway, because Shane is set to go after all monsters, and it would be annoying to have to go change his tactics, leave the room, change his tactics again, only to potentially have to go through this room again. It's a whole thing. Micromanaging is, like, tedious micromanaging isn't my forte. And of course, it's throwing more of the goddamn, ooh, we're gonna chunk out your health through totally legitimate means, mons. I just feel like that's unbalanced, if you ask me. Imagine if we, the heroes of this game, had that ability throughout the game. The programmers would be like, No, that's too powerful. Take it away. Oh, they have it. It's perfectly fine. It can chunk away our health. Easy peasy. You motherfucking wingle. Why game? At least wild Pokemon in the dungeons don't have access to linked moves. If I stepped into that room and it was a monster mash, I would have just been annoyed. Because in my experience, really... Monster houses only exist in two places. The room that you spawn in, or the room that the exit is, is, is in. There is no in-between. And I don't know why. It is those two extremes, everything else is bupkis. Oh hey, it's that motherfucker again. I just don't see how it's a fair ability, because those Pokémon have hundreds of health, so you're going to need to do hundreds of damage. Granted, yes, it doesn't activate if they are killed, but still. We are level 74 up in here, and they still take two hits to kill. Will you fuck off, you ranged bitch? 
All right, I don't understand that. That, like, restrict did one damage. What was that one artillery on? That it did, like, 30 to 40 damage chunks. Did I come down with, like, brittle bone disease all of a sudden? I just wanted to make sure that was a rock and not something important. I hate that this wingle is in this orientation with me. Why can't Shane be the one next to me at all times where he'll actually be useful as opposed to this wingle, which is useless to me? I mean, for God's sakes, Icewind Dale. And like, by like a Boulder's Gate from early 2000s and late 90s let you control who was where and what orientation and things. But they walked in. Why not this? Where are you, Lugia, you bitch? I'm here to stab you. I guess I have to use a huge apple. Oh well. Or I could eat a plain seed. Nom nom, plain seed. Nothing happened, but it did fill my belly slightly. And there should be... Is there another one? Oh, that motherfucker. I only have, like, one reviver seed. Hmm. This is why I don't... This is why I don't do escort missions anymore. Because they're just... Nine times out of ten, they're always in, like, the latest edition. Of dungeons. With the traps and monsters to match. And your escortee is, like, level one. Dies in one hit. Roams over all of the traps. It is just painful. I don't do escort missions anymore for that exact reason. Because it's just not worth it. Why confusion? I hate it. I hate this stupid ass thing. Uh, confusion. It's so fun to not be able to do anything for multiple turns. That's the most fun you can have, not being able to do anything. Remember to stay hydrated while you're under the sea being attacked by water-type Pokemon with water attacks. Because that's surely what you need when you're under the sea. Under the sea. Under the sea. Where everything's pain. Down in the rain. Take it from me. Die, little pearl man. Go to pearl hell. Getting dizzy from hunger. I will carve out your eyeballs. With a spork. The sea could be salty and salt is a dehydrant. That's true. That also would make it even worse. You're surrounded by all this water. It's being used to attack you. And it's actively making you more thirsty. It's like anti-water. That is water. You want to make someone's life a living hell? Just add salt to make anti-water. Anti-water, because die. Bleg. Why is this even called a silver trench? This isn't really a trench, it's basically like all the other undersea, underwater dungeon places. Anti-water isn't- isn't that just steam? Damn it. And of course, the exit's all the way over there. Oh, motherfucker, are they using agility? 
because the world is pain. But I don't think anti-water would be steam. Really, anti-water would be the uh, superheated water that, if you, like, cook in a uh, microwave in the right container, superheated water that should be steam already will still be water, and then once it's, like, comes into contact with the right surface, it'll basically explode. Now this is some bullshit. <laughs> Quit using agility, you assholes! I wanna play! Do I have to put on my emulator's super speed? To be able to do anything? And why can they use confusion too? Utter bullshit, man! This is Mishanigans! Oh no, your belly's empty! And the game's being an asshole! I sure do love not being able to get a turn. But I see my next target. Okay, first things first. Wingle. Run away! I will suffer the consequences of not eating an apple for a bit. Fuck off! <laughs> Game! Okay, I'm just gonna activate the super speed so that I can actually get to playing the goddamn game. This is why I wanted to kill that asshole, because confusion lasts for five billion years! This is such shenanigans, man. And now I have to go to super speed so that all of them can do their five billion moves. Why is Shane still fucking confused, game? This isn't fair. This is just stupid. This is genuinely stupid. Completely and utterly. God, I hate agility. It's such a stupid thing to give enemy Pokemon. Especially in a goddamn monster house. They did this on purpose. Once again, making my assumption that, like, the inclusion of an escort Pokemon to go through this dungeon was done purely to make it bullshit. And not like for any actual tangible reason. God, that's so stupid. I think we're completely out of Reviver Seeds, which honestly, not that bad. We're probably going to annihilate frickin' Lugia. I just hate this. Let's see. Hmm. Avoid trouble, I guess. Good, he's gone. Goodbye. This is honestly very stupid. Confusion and agility in a single monster house. Whoever designed that to be thrown into a steam bath for 500 years, you do not get to leave. You will become the human prune. God, that was so stupid game. Why? Why do that at all? Oh, well, it's about difficulty. There's nothing difficult about that. That's just annoying. Five billion enemies that all get more turns than you. 
Like, that's not difficulty, that's just stupid. Like, maybe I would accept that a bit more if not for the fact that the game has already, in this dungeon alone, done stupid bullshit with the mandatory, out-of-nowhere, escort quest. And it's not even, like, a story escort quest. It's just, hey, randomly have a water Pokemon with you, even though all the other dungeons that require dive or surf don't do, this, do that exact same thing. It just makes no sense. And bothers me. Like, if it was a dungeon that wasn't that difficult, or wasn't that long, like, if this was a 50-level dungeon, and it made me do that, okay, fine. I wouldn't be that bothered by it, I guess. But there's only so much shenanigans of, like, it's a 99-level dungeon that breaks convention from all the other HM dungeons, and also has mandatory monster houses with monsters that know confusion and agility that they spam liberally. Because, you know, that's fun. Just makes no sense to me. Just feels wonky and weird and out of nowhere, and will you fuck off with the confusion? I swear, there's so many confusion using Pokemon in this goddamn game. In fact, there are lots of, like, status afflictions that are basically that, oh, hey, you don't get to play the game right now. Situations which are just stupid. Well, fine, I'm gonna walk away if you're gonna do that. I'm going to use Protect, and then I will walk away. Goodbye. I'm gonna make it so you can't play the game! Then I will walk away and not play your game. God, I wish I could have done that in the- Will you fuck off with the confusion, you jackass? Seriously! It's just annoying, and lasts way too long! I honestly wouldn't be surprised if tons of these Pokémon can't even learn confusion naturally. Not to mention confusion always hits in this, it feels like. It's just annoying. At least I don't have to deal with the traps as much. Thank God, if only because I basically just super grinded the gummies to be able to ignore terrain and ignore traps. Basically circumventing a good chunk of the barriers in this game. And then I guess the developers are like, oh no, they have circumvented the barriers of this game through the events that we have facilitated. Now we have to make things unbearable. It just feels very silly. Well, at least I have my ally with me. And I don't have to worry of that stupid fucking wingle getting in the way. Now we have to annihilate them, all of these cloisters. Why the fuck would you do that, Shane? <laughs> they were gonna come to you anyway. And just, like, try to make it so they can't confuse both of us. Oh, of course. Why does Cloister have two entire fuck you, you don't get to play the game moves? And why did he get to use them twice? Will you asshole? Goddamn game. Not to mention, I just realized that if I wasn't playing this on an emulator, that one monster house would have been unbearable on top of everything. 
because they were all agilityed up with confusion, and I had to be like, tab, 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 just praying that eventually I will be granted the ability to play the game again. But at least here on an emulator, I can say, screw you, let me play the game through the ability of super speed. Because, like, it's one thing, like, I think that basically proves my stance that confusion and agility on enemy Pokemon isn't difficult, it's just annoying. Because that 90% of that monster house was just time waste. It just hurts so much, it hurts the soul. It hurts my spaghetti soul. I just find it hilarious that all this is happening. After I have attained the ability to ignore traps. Why does everything in this dungeon have confuse? Why? Everything! God! That is just frustrating. And it's like they know that it is bullshit, so they use it. So much. And the problem is, they keep introducing new Pokemon through the dungeons and these floors. So it's entirely possible you'll come across a Pokemon you don't expect to have Confuse Ray. And then it'll go, Psych, I have Confuse Ray. And it'll eat your soul. It is just so bothersome. At the very least. I should be able to beat Lugia decently. Even though I do not have any Reviver Seeds because the gimmick of this dungeon is waste your resources and time, I guess. And I will just keep going on that just slightly. Because why? That is just bothersome. But actually, that kind of makes sense now that I think about it, because unlike pretty much every other dungeon that requires an HM to get to, this one hasn't forced me to quick save before I enter it, which is very weird. All the other ones, pretty much every other 99.9 level dungeon forces a quick save. Because it's, ooh, we are big and we are bad and we are challenged. Then comes along this one where it's just like, I'm going to hurt you, but you can restart from a save if you want. But alright then. On we go to level 99. Why? Why have you come here? This is the Silver Trench. This is my territory. My name is Lugia. I am the guardian of the seas. To protect this sea, to have I have settled here. Then why are you making like whirlwind tornado things if you dare to challenge me? So be it. I will rise to your challenge. Cast aside all thoughts. Unleash every bit of your power. With your life at stake, bring it on. That's an interesting speech. Let's go together. I love this remix of the Runaway Fugitive song. Oh, that's super effective. Hm. See? The boss monsters don't even mean anything to me anymore. It was just so bothersome. Why? But now we are free. But I think... I'll check that mail, grab Shane, deal with our inventory, and then I'll see if there's anything special I have to do for that one other dungeon. 
that you gain access to after beating the Silver Trench. But yeah, the Silver Trench is bullshit. If only because of that escort thing. I don't know why it does that. No other thing does that. We'll, we'll talk to uh, Alakazam, I guess. Since he's the one that's like, hey, go do this. And then we did. I don't even care about selling the golden diddlydees. You can have dive back, all right. We'll need a bunch of reviver seeds and a few more apples. Also, that's a mean dungeon. It didn't even give me a single apple. How dare. Hmm. Where's the normal apples? I'll take normal apples. Where are my normal apples? I hate that this thing, like, both is and isn't. Like, the apple was right there, but it was mixed in with everything else because it both is and isn't alphabetical and it hurts my soul. And we'll take a huge apple, just to be safe. And then we will take our reviver seeds, which will be somewhere. We'll take three reviver seeds with us. Thank you very much. But yeah, that was such a weird dungeon. Doesn't require a quick save beforehand. It's just weird and wonky. So rescue team, so okay, so you don't care about that at all. Well, honestly, I don't care about that one. And Ekans is gone. Then let's go to the Diddly D over here. Hey, Ekans. Oh no! Medicham went down! What should I do? If I went, I'd only last a little while! Oh no! Medicham through Wish Cave. Help me! Neon Red, the SOS mail apparently sent by Medicham. My name is Medicham. We had no trouble entering this dungeon, but it's horrible here. It is much too difficult. Ekans, he was defeated right away. It makes me want to scream. Somebody, please help me. The place is Wish Cave. The reward is a secret. But it's really very nice. You can be sure of that. The place in which Medicham is thought to have gone missing, the Wish Cave, is now open for exploration. Let's uh, see if he has anything to say about that. Nope, just the same thing. Well, that out of the way, I'm just going to quickly check about that other dungeon. Ah, uh, befriending Lugia. And nine times out of ten, you can't befriend a Pokemon until you beat them once. And considering the shenanigans of that dungeon, I think I can skip Meteor Cave. Thank you very much. Also, I just realized that it doesn't really matter about my... Uh, items, because... Oh, it doesn't even take a spot. Hmm. Interesting. We are going to save, and I guess we'll go to Wish Cave! And dear God, it just added a whole bunch more things, okay. Because Wish Cave, I thought was... or No, we never had access to Wish Cave. For some reason, my brain thought it was... My brain thought it was like the, the Joyous Tower or something, and there was ca a cave over here, but I'm a stupid. I'm a very dumb. Well, let's go to Wish Cave, I guess. Please don't ha force a thing. Must have a Pokemon off the move, Surf, or have hidden thing. Okay, thank God it didn't say that I needed a water type. Mm. Which, again, just doesn't make much sense. Why? Why? <laughs> Was that one? Why is the Silver Trench just that one? Okay, but we need Surf. We'll take Surf with us. And now we'll go to Wish Cave. We shall save because we don't know. Some of these force of quick save, some of them don't. So who knows? 
Is it okay to enter this dungeon with the following rules? Game will be saved. Haha. -ha. The team will enter at level one. All money will be lost on entering. I don't really care. I've bought everything I need. So we do get to keep our inventory, just not our money for some reason. Which is... Odd. <laughs> Why keep our inventory but not our money? Your adventure has been saved. Joke's on you. Ah, uh, now we're back to this. And yep, we have... That... But luckily, all our enemies are also... Oh. Alright, our tactics are down. What about our IQ? Oh no. That's interesting. That is very interesting. Considering we only need to get to level floor 20... Wait, quick attack? We are back to the basics indeed. This is interesting. I miss my all-terrain destruction. Yeah, we'll smack down some enemies. And, uh... Well, let's see how long it takes for us to level. A decent bit that these will not do much. This is interesting. Very interesting. Then again, we'll probably we probably get more experience if we like used moves, but I don't know what this game expects from me. We just need to get to level 20. That's all we need. I miss my all-terrain. Why are you stuck there now, you... You idiot? Hmm. Fine, I'll come back for you, you moron. I hate this aspect of the go after enemies thing because it's just dumb in those situations. I want to get that enemy that's over there. It's just very silly. But yeah, we just need to get to level 20 of this dungeon. Ah, but it has traps. Because of course it does. Why? Why did I have to take my IQ stuff, too? Stop! You bastarding bitch hole! Why did my tackle only do 5 damage? Did they actually expect me... ...to do super grinding... ...for this? Game, will you fuck off? Why is my attack so low, game? Game! Fuck off! What the hell is with this goddamn Togepi? Why does it have 5 billion goddamn health, game? It didn't even give me that much experience, you asshole! This is stupid! This is dumb! I loathe this. Traps like an in-game level. Bunch of enemies with tons of health. Screws of your bullshit. It's just very bothersome. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> We're gonna annoy you by putting traps everywhere and you can't avoid them because we took away your IQ. Why? Why would you do that? Sure, the game might expect me to do grinding, but why would I do that when I fucking can't do anything anyway? It took away my goddamn bullshit game. This is just very annoying.
This game is just being mean with its dungeons now. Because I thought, like, we would still have our moves. It didn't say anything about our moves. I guess you could technically say, oh, well, but it's tied to your level, but meh. Game Y. Jesus fucking Christ. I fucking hate this. <laughs> This is just annoying. Do they really expect you to waste hours grinding against enemies to level up in this dungeon? I guess I could just bring fucking five billion rocks. You know what, actually, game? Fuck off. Fuck off, game. I'm going to bring five billion rocks. That is going to be ten times faster than what I'm doing. You're gonna throw goddamn bullshit at me, game? You're gonna take away my moves, my link moves, my IQ? I'm gonna bring rocks! I'm gonna bring five billion goddamn rocks! We won't take that many. How's about that game? I will take rocks. Kind of odd that I can't set the rocks while I'm here, but oh well. We gotta take that game. I'm gonna rock your goddamn world. I'm gonna rock it to death. On principle. Because using moves isn't going to do anything for me. I'm just going to use the goddamn rocks. Rock. 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 I'll just rock everything to death because screw you, game. You're gonna throw traps at me like a late game level? You're gonna take away my moves, my linked moves, my IQ? Well, how about for this big 5 million IQ move? Rocks! Rocks! How's about that? You're going to throw... He's the tanky boy. Rock. How dare you. Rock! Rock! Cleffa wants to join. No. Especially because you would be sorely outleveled by later on if those goddamn Togepi are any record of annoyance. Alright, that's kind of weird. Oh, it's just a piece of water. It's a water tile. I was wondering what that was. Apple. At least this is giving a decent amount of apples, though. Alright, there's a lumbering horde coming our way. Rock. 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 Why is that you he fucking hate the maester? Two Miss Rocks? Close together? How dare you? Rock. I do have a link box, but I have no use for it because I have rocks. Who needs a link box when I have tons of rocks? Who needs Pokemon moves when I have violence? I can't wait to bash a Togepi in the head with all my rocks. That Togepi is going to be like, ha ha! My time has come to shine, to make foes quiver before me, Togepi, and then I just pff, 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 machine gun rocks into its face. Oh, hey, it's the bastard. Die.
We will power on through the power of rock. Rock. And Shane is not going to be allowed to charge after enemies. Because no. We are going to power ahead to level 20, throwing rocks the entire goddamn way. Rock. 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 You're gonna hit hard? I'm gonna hit harder with rocks. Rock. Rock. The ultimate move that conquers worlds. Oh no. Rock. Rock. We leveled up! Yay! It just took five billion rocks! And I do not have the rocks necessary. Oh, no. Why is Togepi like the scariest goddamn thing in this dungeon so far? Rock. 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 I have over 400. How dare you live? Rock. Over 400 rocks back home. Well, I guess 300 now, but I have a lot of rocks back home. You think I'm afraid to spend some of them on you? Rock. Rock. I shall eat this apple off the ground, because why not? Come forth and face my rocks if you dare. I probably should have brought the full 99. I will feed this to you since you've been using a lot more moves than I have. Through, we're halfway there. Through the power of rocks, I better not goddamn run into a monster house in this frickin' place. I probably won't be able to throw that many rocks about. Yeah, we're just powering on using rocks. Speed ahead, use rocks. But go ahead and annihilate that guy's day. Because he exists. Rock. Rock. Oh, I missed. I'll have to go pick up those rocks. This has to be what they intend for you. Because why in the world would it be anything else? Rock. Eh, I'm sure you can handle it. Rock. Rock. Will you die, you little not to? Die by rock. And now it's changed up the music. Nice. We care not about the enemies we face. Only the rocks that we throw. At least it has good music. <laughs> Choices this dungeon. Also, it has an interesting, like, tile set now. I don't think I've seen this tile set before. Oh, no. Rock. Rock. Why risk the enemy being able to live by using a different attack when I can just use rock? <laughs> and then they decided to glare at each other. Hilarious. Another D-pad room.
We're four levels away. Oh no. Rock. 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 Why did you glare? Why didn't you just smack it? I mean, I guess I could turn off the leer. Huzzah for level ups. At least these low level level ups are actually pretty substantial. <laughs> you you be my meat shield. Rock. 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 Around the corner rock. You know that one movie that's based off of a comic book, but like nothing at all like the comic book it's based off of for the most part, in which a guy learns to be an assassin and curve bullets around, like, buildings and walls and everything. That with rocks and Pokemon. How dare you. Rock. 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 I will throw all the rocks this world has to pay me. To destroy my enemies. I have to go slow now because that motherfucker did the 18 damage. And I have only 25 health currently. I do not want to be annihilated. Oh no. Rock. I just awakened the other one. Oh no. Rock. Don't send your rock. Okay, good. I will walk back and forth to get my health back very slowly. Because we do not have the levels that apparently facilitated super walking back health recovery. Rock. I have the rocks to spare. You do not have the life to spare. We'll get to 30 and then move on. No. I messed up my flow. Rock. Rock. I have the rocks to defeat you all. I don't need to beat a, a, like a boss with rocks. I just need to save somebody in here. That's close enough. Let's move. We'll go one step at a time. So I can ha best optimize my... Oh no. God damn it, game. This is very bad. These guys have lots of health. Please give us lots of experience. They do give us lots of experience. But that is very dangerous. They have a lot of health. They're going to eat up all my rocks. Why do I keep fumbling the rocks, game? How dare you? These rocks are valuable. These rocks are my friends. <laughs> Imagine, like, Fire Emblem. It's like, I fight with my friends. By throwing them at people. How did you get in that room we just left there? Yes, please, do more of that. Rock. Rock. I want to join, but I don't want you to join. Go away. Need to be careful. Need to be careful. Oh, no. And, of course, my partner decided to run away. Aha! Fool! I teleport again! I hate you, game. Maybe you will level us up again? Quit dodging all of my shit. Quit dodging my rocks. 
All right, so these Skarmories do very nicely when it comes to leveling up. But they're also very dangerous, and they take all of my rocks. How many rocks do I have left? Oh, no. I don't have that many rocks left. Please don't have another Skarmory. You bastard. I specifically asked there not to be another one. Uh, you can do it. You can do it. I said you can do it, Shane. You can do it. So each one is basically a, a capsulified level to us. But at the same time, they also take away all of my goddamn weapons. We're going to eat this huge apple. And yeah, we're just gonna power on ahead. We're one level away now. You motherfucker game. Stick, please do more damage. It did not. Let's see if my moves do more damage now. They do not. But we can at least try. This is very dangerous. Quit goddamn missing Shane. That's not what I wanted to do, game. I'm so used to it being normal, but they took it away, my normal. Yeah, that didn't even level up. Everything is pain. Everything is pain. Stick. We are one floor away. Shane, kill him. Why are you still alive? Game, I hate you. <laughs> like, also, it doesn't feel like these guys are proportionally leveled to us. They feel way higher level than any of the actual, or at least higher statted. I hate you, game. I defeat an enemy and you throw the next one at me. Will you go away? I'm disabling your goddamn bullshit. Absorb, like, uh, Leer is useless to us. I'm going to throw this at you so you have more of your quick attacks, though. Oh, fuck off, game. Eat. Why dodge this? That is a stupid waste of my time. I'm gonna be out of rocks. There's not much I can do to help. Yes, the exit. Please, Metacham, be in the room we spawn in. Hey, literally is. Oh my, my, I can't seem to find a way out. Don't you dare. What am I to do? We've come to save you. Oh, you? Perhaps you have come to rescue me? Yes, yes, I'm so lucky. Thank God. The game didn't even give me a chance to continue on my own. Medicham, you're safe. Yes. I'm so sorry, Ekans. That dungeon, it was too much for me. Thank you for saving me. I appreciate it. Ow, ow, ow. My body, it hurts all over even now. But that dungeon, what is it about it? They say it makes a wish come true, so I went. But it was so very hard in there, most terribly so. Kia! I never want to go again. Such a terrible place. At first I made an SOS call because I did not want to lose this. But I will give it to you. Here, your reward for my rescue. What is it? Ah, wish stone. Neat. They say if you take that stone to the wish cave to its very depths, wonder of wonders, a wish, it comes true. You see? A rich reward, won't you agree? However, if you lose that wish stone on the way, the wish cannot come true. For me, it was impossible, but you must try. <laughs> no! 
I don't think I will. Because that dungeon is pain. Absolute pain. I would have to take basically an inventory of nothing but rocks and reviver seeds. If I wanted to survive that. Especially because... <laughs> Like, I'm sure there are, like, tactics to, like, manipulate it and beat it, but I am not that person. That is not me. I am not the person that can survive all that. Please, come to Tiny Woods. Haha, <laughs> no. Be gone, Tiny Woods. Anything else? Fiery Field. I want to see Drowsy. Help me. Nothing really important. Blah! That dungeon. I do not want to do the level 1 dungeons. They just feel like a pain. We shall go, just put all our stuff away. And then I will see about Saiyan. If I can... Like, uh, access... That l next dungeon stuff. Because let's see. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba. If you have cleared and done that, then the next morning. Hmm. Guess I have to do another. Hmm, I don't know. We'll glance around. Because it says the next morning. Say, sweetie, have you seen Gengar around? No. Oh, okay. Something seems to be wrong with Gengar lately. He won't do anything wicked with us anymore. I wonder what's wrong with him. Yeah, he looks like he has a lot on his mind. You think so? His expression, it looks the same as usual, no? All I've seen in him is, uh, is him laughing in his usual mean way. No, it's different, I can tell. The way he sets his mouth, it's different. Just a little at the corners. Hmm, perhaps that is so. Anyways, without Gengar around, Team Meanies can't operate. Such a vexing problem. So I need to find Gengar. Where are you, Gengar? Interesting that I'm able to say yes, even though I haven't been able to find him. The guide said the next morning he should come visit. Was he just standing outside my house and I didn't realize? Was he in my house and I didn't realize? Hmm. Well, we're, we'll go quickly finish off Tiny Woods and see if the next morning he'll come. Because I completed Stormy Sea... I completed Stormy Sea, and I saved Metacham, so that should have brought him to my door. We'll quickly just run through this simple dungeon, beat up these poor beings. I forgot that I could do that, because the game took it away from me. And it reactivated the bullshit! Kind of annoying. Oh no, I think I still had it activated from the Silver Trench. But I don't remember it, so... Hmm. We're just gonna power through, annihilate everyone, wake up in the morning. That poor fool, he hit me, and by the time I was ready to hit him, I was back at full health. That was good work today. Bullying, like, basically children in a forest. Come on, Gengar. Come to me. Gengar, you prick. Are you out here? You better be. Hmm. Because I finished Stormy Sea. I saved Metacham. The game said... Huh. 
very odd, very weird. I'll quickly glance over it over if he's not in the, like, the town again. Let's glance around the town if more... Ah. Huh. And now they're down here. Hmm, let me quickly read the guide again. Alright, if you have cleared Stormy Sea and completed the mission to rescue Metacham from Wish Cave, then the next morning, Gengar will come see you. Hmm. I think Gengar headed off to Mount Freeze. I heard it's a place that is very difficult. Will he be okay? Hmm. I wonder if this means I'm supposed to wait another day before I should go clear Mount Freeze myself. <laughs> Save my child in the Silver Trench! No. No, I won't. Because I have to take Wingle with me, and Wingle is an asshole. Hmm. We'll quickly clear Tiny Woods again. And see if even more progresses. It's been a bit since the game expected me to, like, do optional stuff, so... I'm not used to this. It could be something I'm missing, because... Like, Alakazam hovering in the corner, and I'm just like, Hmm, where's Alakazam? Could just me be me me being a stupid... Could always be. And if Gengar doesn't, I guess we could just go to Mount Freeze. But at the same time, Mount Freeze is a longer dungeon. Not as long, it's like 20, I think. We'll see if Mount, because who knows. Oh, hey, Gengar! Yay! <laughs> Late Riser! Like always, slow to rise, aren't you, Team Shining? <laughs> Cha! But that's not what I came here to say, not today. It irks me to say this, but I need your help. Can you take me to Mount Freeze? I tried going up over and over, but it's steep and harsh. Ninetales is up on Mount Freeze. I've got to see Ninetales. I'm prepared to do whatever it takes. That's why I'm asking you. Taking me up to Mount Freeze. Sure. <laughs> That's settled. You have my trust. Gengar can now tag along with the rescue team. The only place I want to go is Mount Freeze. I'm not about to tag along if you're going to other dungeons. I'll only tag along with you to go off to Mount Freeze. <laughs> sure thing. I'm just going to grab Shane. And then we'll go to Mount Freeze. Huzzah. To Mount Freeze we go. We're going to save just to be safe. Who knows? Maybe the game will be mean and be like, Psych, Mount Freeze is now level 99. It's going to kick your ass. You're going to Mount Freeze? Don't forget to take me, Kake. Very interesting. Especially because you essentially disappeared from the plot. Then again, there hasn't really been a plot since we beat the game. Because last time we saw you, you uh, brought us back from the dead, basically. I wonder if that means that technically there are corpses that were obliterated by the falling star. Because we were up on the uh, sky tower, we fought Rayquaza, Rayquaza nuked the... The, the falling meteor. We died. Gengar brought us back to life. And now we will just go up to see Ninetales. Also, you're only level 15. What have you been doing with your life? I would have expected, like, at least, like, I don't know, level 30 from you. You're lower level than other escort monsters I've taken. Granted, you have, like, decent health, I suppose. Once again, we're just charging straight ahead. 
bastard. You're a ghost. How does a rock hit you? I forget how many levels Mount Freeze has. Like I said, I think it's around 20-ish. Maybe less. 15 to 20 is my proper estimation. Man, it's so nice to go through a dungeon that is normal and not bullshit. Enemies don't know confusion or confuse Ray or whatever. They can't confuse me. Enemies don't know agility. There aren't monster houses that are mandatory, either on entrance or exit. Traps aren't abound to ruin my day and make my escort minion run into them eternally. Really, there's nothing more frustrating than a decently designed game becoming less well-designed purely to justify difficulty. That's my least favorite, I don't know, what do you call it, a uh, trope? Like, happenstance? It's just a very bothersome thing. But yeah, it's just interesting to have Gengar with us. I wonder what his story is gonna be about. Especially because this is taking this is a story mission taking us to a dungeon that's like an old dungeon. A very, very long ago dungeon. Not to mention, it's also connected to Ninetales. He wants to go see Ninetales specifically. That's interesting. What is your deal, Gengar? Why do you want to see Ninetales? Especially because technically you're the reason why we went through the mountain. Also, gotta ask. I gotta ask this before we continue on. I just realized... This feels like this would be something that happens, like, immediately after the post-game, don't you think? Like, a dungeon we're going through that has no traps or anything. We're con it's connected with Gengar to some degree. Granted, that also means that if we... <laughs> I guess they wanted to... This is just hilarious, by the way. Technically, the game prompted us to go to Wish Cave... The hardest dungeon we've been through yet because of its shenanigans. And now we're back at Mount Freeze. Just a normal dungeon. It feels crazy. It feels mad. It's like the game just going, we're gonna go super hard and now we're gonna go back to being normal. I forgot this is a midway dungeon. Just hilarious. Oh, you went for like 16 levels? Here, have a rest point. Meanwhile, level 99 dungeons. I swear, there's... Because I know that there's like an editing tool people have created to basically facilitate the creation of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon fan games that you can like edit the various like things with. And I think it's actually a relatively new creation, all things considered. But, you know some psychopath is like, I'm gonna make a 99 level dungeon that's midway, so that there's two 99 level dungeons stacked on top of each other. I wonder if that, like, mystery dungeon creation tool that people have made, so you can make your own mystery dungeon game, I wonder if it's like, uh, has the ability to make your own traps. Because I think traps have a place in the game. They just can't be that, like, game-destroying. They can't take away your, your, like, uh, your items, in my opinion, because that's a little too harsh for, like, 99-level floor dungeons. 
they shouldn't affect your carry items because, like, they're rare and you use them. Granted, I think they also don't, like, destroy them. They just make them unusable for the current dungeon. But that also still, like, affects the player's ability to, like, manage their inventory. I just don't think things should touch the inventory too often. Unless, again, it was telegraphed. Something the player could look out for and be like, Oh no, I should not go there. Again, I think that's what traps should have been all along. Not just, like, I apparently, you can discover traps if you, like, basic attack over them. But that's stupid. That is such a... Fiddle dee dee. Ninetales isn't here. <laughs> here at last! We're at the peak! Hey, Ninetales! Where are you? Come out! For some reason, I was expecting an Alolan Ninetales, even though they don't exist yet. <laughs> Long time, Ninetales. Recognize me? What do you want? You know! You want to know what I want? Look at me! Is it your fault that I look like this? What, you can't even begin by apologizing? It is not my fault. It all arose because you fled. Isn't that so? You fled from yourself as a human. And you fled from Gardevoir. Okay, just no pretenses, just... Drop the hammer. Okay. So I'm a-guessing that you... That he is the legendary human, which is hilarious. He knew that he was setting us up as him. That's honestly hilarious. It was I who cast the curse. But you became Gengar because you abandoned Gardevoir. It was Gardevoir that bore my curse, not you. Kek! <laughs> You're quibbling! Anyway, about that curse... How about lifting it already? You... You have the nerve to ask that? Cat, <laughs> that's right! Imagine me asking anyone for a favor! I'm breaking out in hives at the thought! Turn me down and I'll KO you! Well, it won't be me doing the fighting, but those behind me! I'll see this curse lifted, even if it means taking you on! Huh! <laughs> I regret to inform... Even if you could defeat me, the curse would remain. I don't have the power to lift curses. That's kind of hilarious. I he can they can grant curses, they can't take them away. What are you saying? We nine tails are known to be vengeful in the extreme. Once we cast a curse, it is final. A curse so powerful even we cannot lift it. There may be a way, however. I became enraged at your treacherous heart. And on it, I laid my curse. For that reason, depending on your heart now, the curse may be lifted. Take this with you. <laughs> a nine-tail crest. Wait a minute. <laughs> the... Uh, it's called a nine-tail crest with the number nine and the word for, like, animal tail, not story tail. Meanwhile, nine tails is nine stories. My brain is on fire. Gardevoir's physical form is sealed within the murky cave. The seal can be broken by that stone. So technically you are saying you can indeed lift the curse. Wait a minute. Why is Gardevoir hidden in another dungeon? Did you put her there? Because sure, you like cursed Gardevoir, but... Meh, you make no sense. The Nine Tail Crest. Ah, yes. Nine stories, nine number, tail, animal thing, crest. This, this spelling hurts me. Gotcha. We just go to this murky cave and plunk down that rock. And that breaks the seal. So goodbye to the curse. <laughs> How do you like that? It's ridiculously simple. There was a way to lift the curse after all. You had me scared. <laughs> Hey, I kept you waiting. Let's get home. Keke. <laughs> that oaf. 
He has changed in many ways, but he is wavering. His old and new emotions are clashing within his heart. If he would only realize that upon reaching the murky cave, if he does not... This is the first... This is the old... Like, aside from, like, bare moments, this is the only true story dungeon. Well, that and the Metacham, I guess. The Wish Cave of Pain. Keke! <laughs> you did good today! Next we go to that murky cave place. That sounds like another challenging place, so I'll need your help still! Keke! <laughs> It is kind of interesting that it's like after a long series of non-story post-game dungeons. Kick <laughs> late riser. It's the murky cave next. I'll need your help for that. Sure. Kick <laughs> it. Then I'll go to the murky cave. Gardevoir's physical form. That's where it is. For my sake, Gardevoir. Nah, that's not important. I just feel like going. Kick <laughs> it. Okay, go there for me, to the Murky Cave! The only place I want to go is the Murky Cave. I'm not about to tag along if you're going to other dungeons. I'll only tag along with you go to when you go off to the Murky Cave, keke! Very interesting. Especially because this also... I just realized that we never did get, like, anything to do with Gardevoir. Like, Gardevoir was just in our dreams, just like, ah, oh, yes, here is vague advice stuffs. And then, slam damn, thank you, ma'am. She just disappeared from the story, along with everybody else. And now there's a story again. I guess we can take all of these Reviver Seeds and Apples with us, because we don't know how evil Murky Cave is going to be. Maybe Murky Cave is a bunch of bullshit. Let's go see if we can talk to, uh... Metacham and Ekans, so we can say, hey, nope, no, they're gone, damn it. I was hoping that they would be a staple of the square now. Maybe they're up here? They have been moving around a lot. Nope, they are gone. Well, good for them. Hope they're not dead. Well, Murky Cave is ahead of Wish Cave. Please, for the love of God, don't be painful. I wonder how many levels you are. Bleh. You're going to the murky cave? Don't forget to take me! <laughs> New music! Neat. Hmm, Zubat. So maybe this will be on the, the same level as the solar cave. How the fuck did you wake up? Okay, enemies go down in one hint. Well, then again, this could be... A, I. It's a level 15 escort, so it can't be that difficult. Again, this very much resembles... Uh... Ah, oh, goddamn confusion. Luckily, there's just Zubats, but still. Since this is a simple place, I'm going to set Shane to go fuck people up. Go after foes. Yeah, the music that's playing is nice. I don't recall it existing. This resembles the uh, solar cave. But we're just gonna charge on ahead because we don't know what's gonna frickin' hurt us. God damn it, stop confusioning me! That's just an annoying ability. At least it's from Zubat and not like other people. For some reason, this really sounds like Ace Attorney music. I like it. But, yeah, just to kind of talk about the story, I guess. Uh, apparently, Gengar knew he was the human the entire time. And decided to spin it up on us. To take the fall for some reason. And plus, it's also kind of weird that his, like, mission statement is, lol, we're gonna, like, go take over the world. And yet they never really do all that much. They try to press gang a child into their team. But that's basically it. They don't really do anything. 
Like, do we even fight Team Meanies in this game? I don't think we do. Wait, no, maybe we did at the end of that one where we, like, went to find, uh... I forget. Yeah, on that on that same mission where they were tried to press gang a child to join their team. Okay, that's bullshit. You should not be able to use a confusion attack multiple times in a row. Fuck you. That should be like a 10% hit chance move because fuck off game. And you just know if I used it, it would miss all the time. But yeah, so far this is a very easy level, and it's mostly just the pain and agony of, like, what we've experienced in previous levels that's caused me ire. While you're going through a simple dungeon, remember to stay hydrated. But I just find it hilarious. So far, all of Gengar's mission stuffs have been very easy and nice, like as if they were part of the main story. Which is kind of hilarious. It's like this was part of the main story all along, but it got shifted to like the very back of the game. Because I think this is one of the last dungeons that you can unlock. Like, story-wise, post-game-wise. Or at least what I consider story. I like the music, I like the vibes. We gotta beat up this man. <laughs> Lear, Harden, and then there was no change. What's of all the shit ninja? Quit killing my escortee. Why did you taunt him? You morang! You are the weakest one here! It's like if you had a five-year-old that knew how to be the center of attention in a fight, and you're like, why are you doing it now? I'm helping! As, like, a nuclear bomb hurdles toward their face. They are smiling. Really, if anything, it's very surprising that Gengar's, like, willing to get involved in the fights at all. Because he's just like, oh, I'm not gonna fight Ninetales, these guys behind me will. But then when we get to these guys... He's like, yeah, I'll risk it. Yeah, goddammit. Darn you, shit ninja. Why do you exist? Alright, that's kind of bullshit. I just don't want to expose Gengar to being hit. Especially because he uses moves that don't do anything for us. It's kind of weird that Shed Ninja is like the least annoying thing to fight in these games. Sure, it only takes one damage, but it only has 10 health. Sure, it can heal itself midway in the fight. But it's not that bad considering what else the game can throw at you. I would take a dungeon made up entirely of Shed Ninja. Then stuff like the, the Wish Cave and Silver Trench. And again, I swear, the way this, this song in particular is designed, it sounds like an Ace Attorney song. It just fits the vibe so well. Either that or it's just like, I guess, the sound font of the DS. Then again, I don't think the DS had a sound font, just like a sound restriction. It's not like the Super Nintendo or NES or Sega Genesis that had particular sound banks that they drew from. 
that their sound chip could specifically make those noises. Although I guess that's technically what I was saying to a degree. The limitations of what the DS could put out is what was then used to make the music. Shane can annihilate all- oh, he lived. How dare he. Jesus fucking Christ, what?! Why did that do 150 damage? Sure, it was super effective, but like, none of the other super effective attacks have done anywhere near that amount before. How dare you, game. He has to get the crazy out of his system. Another ghost type we must kill. God damn it. Kill it. Alright, so this dungeon has a few surprises up its sleeve, but nothing, like, terrible, I guess. Not the worst. Just occasional surprise. This Pokémon can wreck your shit. And I hear I thought we were free of one-hit KOs. Well, I mean, uh, against us. Haha, <laughs> you fool, you used insomnia things. And, uh, oh. Thing? You bitch. <laughs> I was like, oh, thank God, we're right next to the exit. Uh, surprise, confusion. Will you wear off already, confusion? Fuck off. I hate the super toxic poison. There were so many items up there, but oh well. We just gotta power through, because there are scary monsters up in here. Again, I know I keep saying it, but every single time this part of the song comes on, I swear it's Ace Attorney. It's just like that. Ah, oh, motherfucker. And I have Oh, I. Mm, I was going to say I'm going to stay, uh, move about, but Shane decided to say no, he's going to move about. Luckily, I get to deal with the toxic throwing assholes. Please don't get one hit hit killed. I don't need that in my life. Good. Oh, please don't. For the love of God, please. Why do you keep missing? Again, what is with the random Pokemon? Like, that one did super effective two damage. What was that 151? One Crobat does 150 super effective damage with that same move. And then... It, it, the same thing happened with that Octillery. Where all of the other Octillery's constricts did just, like, two damage. But then comes along that one Octillery that's just like, aha! Like, uh, fucking, I'm gonna do a chunk of your th third of your health. What is that? That's weird. Are there, like, critical criticals? Are there critical hits that if they also roll for double critical, they instantly kill you or what, game? I'm losing my mind. Lol, we just spawned next to a sleeping guy. And we level up too! Yay! I love that Umbreon's level up quote is, and my poison has also increased. Oh, 19. 19? 19 levels. I'm not complaining, I'm just incredu incredulous. What's that word? Incredulous. <laughs> We're here at last! This is it? This is the deepest floor of the murky cave? Oh look! There's a dais! There's a shallow, there's a hollow spot. I guess the stone goes in here. 
Gengar placed the nine tail crest spelting correctly in the hollow spot. <laughs> What's this about? Nothing's happening. Uh, I thought I heard something. K -k -k, did you just say something? I don't really speak. That's odd. I could have sworn I heard something. Well, well, come. Welcome to the murky cave. What? What? Where's that voice coming from? Who are you? I am the judge of darkness. You have nothing to fear from me. I mean you no harm. You have the name Judge of Darkness. What? Just now, a key was inserted to break a curse. The curse? It is the one of, on Gardevoir. <laughs> exactly! Please lift the curse now! I cannot allow that right away. I must first know if you have earned the right. I must evaluate you. Is this Judge of Darkness actually the, like... The voice that played out during the quiz? That would be amusing. You must bear your true feelings to me. Kike, <laughs> what? You're going to test me? What, I have to fight some boss creature? Oh no, nothing so barbaric. All that I need is for some questions to be answered. However... Kike, what the? I can't move! Gengar, you will not be doing the answering. Neon, you will answer. All right. What are you saying? Why is someone else speaking for me? Let me do it! Gengar, your heart is interwoven with conflicting emotions. You will probably never show the truth within your heart. What? Neon will enter Gengar's heart. Please navigate carefully through Gengar's emotions. <laughs> All right, we're, I guess, magicking school bus this. If you fail to draw out Gengar's true feelings, the curse will never be broken. G -g -g hey, Neon! Do you dare fool around? I'll make you pay for it! You have but one chance. Neon, do your best. Fine. It is time. First of all, why does Gengar wish to break this curse? It's definitely not just a whim. I feel like he wants to help Gardevoir. That's a lie, isn't it? Didn't Gengar abandon Gardevoir long ago? Why would Gengar want to save Gardevoir now? For taking the curse, came to understand Gardevoir. I wonder what that means, exactly. He came to understand Gardevoir by being a Pokemon? Or would it be for taking the curse? I do wonder if we are, like, in a part where if I mess up, I'm done. I don't think so. That would be very rude. If you, like, do that. <laughs> He's like, hey, you took the wrong questions. You, uh, you'll you fail. I don't think so. That would be rude. I'd have to go through the dungeon again. <laughs> hmm. Why would he want to save Gardevoir now? He came, uh, came to understand Gardevoir. Came to understand Gardevoir's feelings. What is it you claim to understand? What do you claim to be Gardevoir's feelings? Caring for Gengar. Caring for Gengar. I see. Gardevoir became a presence without a physical form because she bore the curse. But even then, Gardevoir never stopped caring for Gengar. Having learned that, Gengar now wants to save Gardevoir. It makes sense. However, until now, Gengar had in forgotten entirely about Gardevoir, correct? But now Gengar wants to save Gardevoir. Isn't that asking a lot? Asking a lot for what? Like, asking a lot of who. Like, the wording confuses me. Isn't that asking a lot? I wonder what the game means by that. 
because the game is weird and using weird language, I shall do a wonky save. I don't think that's asking a lot. You say that is not so. You believe this is another matter? And to help is only natural? That is what you believe. I understand now. My questions are finished. Did I succeed? Did I win the test? Gengar, whether you have the right to break the curse or not, I will now render my judgment. The curse could not be lifted. Wait! It is most regrettable, but the curse on Gardevoir will last all eternity. I'd better not have failed. How dare you, game? Wait! Wait a minute! Huh, did he break it by himself or was he released? Let me... Let me say something! It's true. I abandoned God of War and ran! And it's plain run away. I was afraid that the curse would fall on me. I had to get away no matter what. That's what I thought. It didn't take long for me to forget about the curse and about God of War. Many long years passed, but God of War, she never forgot about me. One night, in Neon's dream, God of War said this, that she considered me an irreplaceable friend, and that she still believed we would meet again. God of War kept thinking about someone like me, but I, how selfish I was. I lived carefree all this time. I realize now how selfish I was. It's not just God of War. Team Shining put up with my selfishness and brought me here. I finally know what I was missing. What I lacked. It was something for the others. A sense of gratitude. What was that? The lock bearing the curse. It has opened. Hey, you did it! You were true to yourself! G God of War! It worked, Gengar. N Nine tails? But I don't know what you're saying. The curse has been broken. I cast my curse and raged at your twisted heart. When your heart gained what it had been missing, the curse was shattered. The final key to break the curse was your sense of gratitude. Then God of War! You may be reassured. God of War has returned. She will soon awaken. However, that you were her partner in the past, God of War will have no recollection of that. Oh, that's, that's harsh, man! That doesn't matter. God of War is back. That's enough for me. Thank you so much. My curse has been lifted. You did this for me, even though I'd never met you before. I have no idea how to thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so very much for saving me. Good for you, God of War. Hey, Neon. Thanks for getting me through this. This is my thanks. Mobile Scarf. Marios. Oh, wait, please. What is it now? Your name. Please, what is your name? <laughs> the name's Gengar. Glad to meet you. My name is Gardevoir. I'm also glad to meet you. That is heart-wrenching and sweet. And that's like the only actual story-based thing. All of the other ones are like, lol. Dungeon, f small cutscene fight. But I don't understand why that was placed where it was. We'll let things go, and then I'll quickly do research, because to get there, you have to go through a decent amount. Like, let's see. Murky Cave. You have to clear Stormy Sea, which is based right off, and then complete the rescue on Metacham. But to get Metacham, you have to have the Latios duo and, yeah, the a certain friend area. 
So I guess technically it's not that much. So really, if you really wanted to, you could go the Latio story, then the Wish Cave story with Metacham, and then the Murky Cave story with Gengar. So the entire like subplot surrounding Spinda and the legendary dogs to get to Ho-Oh, and then recruiting the legendary birds to awaken Lugia, which then, if you befriend Lugia, which I am not going to do because that is a pain in the ass, purely because you have to bring a water type with you for no bloody reason, it's still so weird. You have to bring an HM with you and a water type Pokemon with you, but it doesn't ask you to save it so Freaking weird. But I do believe that will be the end of the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team series. Oh, hey, Gardevoir. I have done a lot with a lot of thinking. I would like to join Team Shining and help on rescues. Please, may I become a member? Yeah. Thank you. I promise to do my best for the team. Huzzah. And we shall not give her a nickname because... She is Gardevoir. That's kind of interesting that that's where you can recruit her. And then I guess Team Meanies are gone forever. So yeah. I do think that some of the post-game dungeons are nice. But some of them are bullshit. Some of them are bullshit. But yeah, I think... In fact, let's go back to the the guide and see specifically what it takes to unlock the hmm, da, da, da. so yeah basically the only ones you have to do to get like more story based levels are to do the buried relic or whatever to get the like surf and dive so that you can, well, you have to get Stormy Sea, so I guess you get Dive earlier. But either way, you need to get the HMs to then be able to do the other ones. So that you can then unlock the Northern Range. Because it's uh, be available once you have both HM Surf and purchased a friend area. And then that will unlock the Latios storyline, which goes into Pitfall Valley. You get them. It's all good. And then... If, if you want more story, you can just, like, talk to Ekans and Medicham around the town until Medicham needs rescuing. And Wish Cave is just a, a monster of a dungeon. Very mean. But then that leads into the most story-based post-game, which is the Murky Cave. And it just feels very weird because so many of the rest of the... So much rest of the post-game is so basic. So very basic. Like, the legendary dogs, the legendary birds, Ho-Oh, Lugia, the Meteor Cave, Mewtwo's Cave. Well, I guess Mewtwo's Cave kind of had a story, but it was more like setup and payoff. It wasn't the worst dungeon I, uh, or story, I guess, so, meh. But yeah, when it when the game actually puts forth story, I like it. And I do like that Gengar got some character development. It does feel a bit like... I kind of wish that the Gengar post-game had a three-dungeon loop. Where we, like, first have Gengar go in, ask Nine Tails about it. Maybe a second dungeon where we learn that Gengar really is doing this for the best and isn't just doing it on a whim. And then the Murky Cave. Which is just funny because Murky Cave, despite that random one-hit KO Crobat, I still don't understand what that was about. It was a very fun, basic time in what I love Pokemon Mystery Dungeon for. I don't mind if it's difficult. I hate that it's bullshit. 
I don't like confusion as a mechanic. I don't like agility on enemy Pokemon, especially when there's five kajillion of them. I really dislike that monster houses basically begin and end with you spawn in them or you need to go into them to leave. Wish Cave, in my mind, is kind of shenanigans because of the fact that it really does feel like enemy Pokemon are over-leveled compared to you. But higgledy-jiggledy. In the end, the best path for post-game dungeons seems to be get to the Latio story, do the Wish Cave so that you can do Murky Cave. Because, again, when it has story, the story is good. I was tearing up during Gengar's little speech, I swear. It also helped that it was playing my favorite song from this game, Runaway Fugitives. Favorite song. Very good. But yeah, it just, it's kind of funny that so much of the post-game is kind of meh. Very mev, basic setup, basic payoff. You don't even get to recruit the legendary Pokemon unless you go through the damnation a second time. But still, I would say that half of the post game of Blue Rescue Team is kind of pointless. Because it's basically minor setup to facilitate more gameplay rather than actually being a vehicle to make the player want to keep playing. Because, yeah, I don't feel like going and recruiting Lugia just to unlock another dungeon that is going to be just the same thing. Small setup. Oh, there's a thing over there. Go do it. Fight a legendary, probably. I don't feel like doing it. At least with Spenda, there was a, like, a kind of a cohesive thing. With Lugia, it was sudden, like... Granted, Lugia was kind of a hidden thing, because you have to gather all of the legendary birds, and then talk to Alakazam, then go to the friend area, so I guess it's a sort of hidden dungeon post-game thing, so, meh. But yeah, it definitely feels like the post-game is rife with we're going to make it difficult for difficulty's sake, rather than we're going to actually make it fun and challenging. Over difficulty can just ruin things to me. Because again, traps are annoying unless you get the proper IQ skills. M of the various things, especially in the late game. It definitely feels like once you get to a certain part in the post game, they went, oh no, by now the players will have avoided a ton of the annoying things we put in to be annoying. Quick, throw a bunch of annoying Pokemon moves at them. And again, I still don't comprehend why the bloody hell. The, I, I don't understand why in the world you have to take a water type with you to go to Lugia. I don't understand that at all. It's so weird. It is so very weird to me. But, yeah, I do believe, let's look at the guide once again, that is the final dungeon, aside from... Like, that is the final post-game dungeon I care to do. The only other ones are, like, the Joyous Tower and the uh, Purity Forest, which are just, like, higgledy-biggledy bullshit 99 floors. Of course, there's also the Meteor Cave, which, again, after befriending Lugia, will become available. But... I do not care. Especially because the legendary that is in Meteor Cave has a base recruitment stat of negative 10%. <laughs> but yeah, I really do enjoy Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team. I very much don't think that the post game is worth it. Unless you can find a way to finagle around the difficulty. Because if you can get to the Murky Cave storyline, I think it's great. If you can find a way to go through the Latio storyline and get to the Gengar storyline without too much issue, I think the game is honestly really, really good and that post-game is worth it. But I just don't think that the grinding 
that you feel like you should do to have a better chance at surviving the post game is worth the post game. Especially because most of the time it's just, ooh, more dungeons that usually are just palette swaps. And that's also why I'm not actually going to do the uh, Wonder Mail dungeons, because it's just more dungeons. It feels less like dungeons that you should do because you can, and feels more like dungeons that you can do because maybe they have more Pokemon you can recruit in there. There's like little bo it's a, a bonus to do for people that want to grind the 100%, but that's not me. I'm in it for the story. I'll do 100% stuff if it feels like it's worth it, and it doesn't feel like it's worth it here. It does not feel like it's worth it at all here. But, yeah. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team is fun. I like it. The base game before the, like, post-game that starts with you waking up in the Pokemon world and ends with you saving the world by convincing Rayquaza to blow up the meteor, that is some of the best best video game experience I've ever had. Granted, the characters are simple in this game, but the graphics, the music, and even to a degree that basicness of the characters does help. And all in all, this game is fantastic. I wouldn't recommend the post game entirely, again, if you can find a way to do the Latios, Medicham, and then Gengar storylines without grinding, I think it'd be fine. It's just the fact that you basically have to grind the your gummy IQ if you're going to deal with anything late game because of those fucking traps. Traps are just the worst part of this game. Because if it were just, oh, you're now weaker to ground attacks or whatever, or you take damage, or you're slower, or you get warped. Like, the warp one is still pretty good because it punishes you, but not terribly, but potentially terribly because it could warp you into a monster house, which could be amusing. Basically, what I'm saying is play this game on an emulator and have fun. <laughs> I would honestly even argue that you should, once you get to the post game, like, I don't know if it exists, but use an action replay code to max out your gummy IQ at the very least. Because I ref th that is just my one thing. I refuse to deal with traps in the post game now. After I have traps here, I I nothing else. I again, I just wish they handled traps better. I wish that you could tell where traps were by a discoloration on the tiles that they were under. Like again, I understand now that you can basic attack them into existence, but that's lame. To force the player to move, basic attack, move, basic attack. And if you have more than two characters in your party, you have to basic attack in multiple ways so that the third party member doesn't accidentally step on a trap too. Overall, this game is kind of complicated in my feelings. I still really, really like it. In the future, if I ever replay it, I... Because, mm, oh, that Murky Cave storyline, though. That Murky Cave storyline wraps up the game as a beautiful bow. Because the basic story of the game, with you and your partner going to save the world, is a fun, 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 fun time. I wish that... Honestly, I wish that they expanded the base story and kind of got rid of some of the post-game stuff. I could do away with the Lo Lugia and Ho-Oh storylines. Replace all that and make more, like, uh, expand the segment where the hero and partner are fugitives. Like, maybe have a mini-arc where there's an up-and-coming rescue team who want to prove themselves by taking down the fugitives of this rogue rescue team, and you, like, as try to escape them a bit before having to have a boss fight against them. And again, it would have been nice if there was a boss fight against Team ACT. Like, yeah. I wish that the fugitive arc was more expanded, in my opinion. I also wish that there was more story based around the Absol that you meet around the Articuno fight. I kind of, honestly, I wouldn't mind if the game was a bit more linear so that more, like, focus could be placed on the story. But at the same time, I think that wouldn't have helped because 
the game isn't doesn't have that much story because it, like I'm trying to find a way to word it. It's not the fact that the game is kind of a roguelike that can then you can choose a bunch of things to do in your own downtime and do optional dungeons a lot that the game doesn't have like a bunch of story focus on certain characters. It's the because really if the game didn't have the replayable aspects that it does, basic though they are, of like, ooh, just go through and run through the, the dungeons more on these, like, rescue team requests. Like, even if those didn't exist, the story would basically be the same. Because it's not like the resources really went away. That's kind of why I say, hey, maybe shift some focus from making the Ho-Oh and Lugia plot lines. And instead, maybe put a bit more effort into fleshing out some characters and adding a more few dungeons in the Fugitive Arc. Yeah. But that's all hindsight 2020. And as is, the game is very good. The post, ca the bo the post game is fine. If only because it feels bloated. <laughs> it, honestly, the post game feels like watered down versions of the oh no Groudon is waking up go fight him mission because that was a very basic plot point it's like things are happening what is happening Groudon is awakening we have to go fight him like that was a basic like story beat but it fit in with the characters in the flow of the story with the post game though it was just like hey go here to go do this and didn't really fit in with any story and again, I wish that your main partner and hero evolutions had talking things, but at the same time, they're relegated purely to the post-game, so I guess it doesn't really matter that on that front, maybe? I don't know. I do hate that your partner stops following you around at the end, and that there's basically no more character stuff between you and your partner, except for, like, the Latio storyline. Which is very odd that your partner character doesn't come out to commentate on anything that, like, with the rescuing of Medicham or helping Gengar. Your partner has no part in that. It's just you. The amalgamation of Team Shining, I guess. But overall, again, just taking the main story. The main story is great. The main story of, like, again, waking up as a Pokemon near Tiny Woods and going all the way to Sky Tower. I never did freaking get Fly. I never found Fly the HM to go back to Sky Tower. Yeah. But, yeah, the main story, utterly grand. It made me cry. This is the first game to make me cry. I have extreme frustration with some of the post-game, but the main game... The, big, the main part of the game that you're meant to play and... Like, again, it's it's called the post game for a reason. It's post the main game. The main game is great. And I'll probably play the main game again. And then I'll probably use cheats to make my time easier getting through the post game so I can actually enjoy the last bit of story. It's very quick and simple, the last bit. Which is why it's kind of confusing that it's kind of relegated alongside all these other, like, 99-level dungeons. I feel like they went overboard with the with the 99-level dungeons. I feel like those should have been really special dungeons you had to deal with. And instead, they should have focused on making dungeons feel more unique. Like, uh, have, like, 30, 40, 50-level dungeons. Have more midway dungeons with a safe spot and being able to get new items, maybe. Ah, well. In the end, the main game is fun, and a decent chunk of the post-game is fine, but definitely not my favorite. At the very least, that's something to say. There is a lot of love and care that went into the main section of the game. The main section with story and character, that was treated very well. Then the post-game went off the rails, where they let the crazy people out and had the run of the asylum. <laughs> but, yes, that is now the end of Pokemon 
Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team because, again, I don't really care to go to befriend Lugia just to unlock one more dungeon. I don't want to suffer through the Wish Cave. I don't really care about the Challenge Dungeons all that much. And, like... From the feels of it, I highly doubt Meteor Cave is going to have more story than wrapping up Gengar's character arc. I, I, I almost didn't even know that he had a character arc. I guess it kind of is there at the end of the game where he literally brings us back to life. But, but yeah, it's a very fun game. And yes, it's over now. Hmm. It feels like I've been playing this game on stream forever, even though it's only been 12 streams. Hmm. But, next on the docket, I really want to jump into uh, Explorers of Sky, but we'll probably take a break. We'll take a break from Mystery Dungeon, and maybe we'll load up Pokemon Emerald sometime. And of course, we're also playing through Breath of the Wild now, because I'm also taking a break from the uh, Ace Attorney Trilogy... Or really, really, the Ace Attorney franchise as a whole, because I have access to all of the games. I have access to all of the games, including the Japanese exclusive, the only remaining Japanese exclusive Ace Attorney game in Investigations 2. So I'm taking a break from the Ace Attorney games, because I finished Ace Attorney 1 and Justice for All in a nice little binge. <laughs> Amazing that Ace Attorney has it took me 20 streams now. And it's just going to keep on going. But yes, games on the docket. Pokemon Emerald, Pokemon Explorers of Sky, the rest of the Ace Attorney franchise, Breath of the Wild, and Tears of the Kingdom. So many games! Uh, too many games. But yes, thank you very much for watching everybody on this Pokemon Mystery Dungeon journey. If you want more from me, I have an edited content YouTube channel, Neon Icy Wings. I swear, content is coming soon. I swear, I promise. And then, as well, there's also my YouTube streaming channel, Neon Icy Games, where I stream to. And then post the streams to, as well, as archival purposes. There you can watch the various streams of the world past, like Pokemon Yellow and Crystal and Kirby and the Forgotten Land, the Mass Effect Trilogy, Undertale, tons of games. But if you prefer to watch these games live on Twitch, I also have a Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash neonicywings. And if you want more art from me, like my little character in the corner or the end screen, you can find me posting art on Twitter, Tumblr, Newgrounds, DeviantArt, Inkblot, all so many places. And those links can be found in my link tree, which can be found in descriptions, bios, link places all over, but it should be linktr.ee slash neonicywings. There's also links to, I think, some writing and various stuff, Patreon, blah, blah, blah. But yes, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye. Bye.